Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. You know, if you live for Christ, live for Christ. Make a choice. You know, in this wicked world right here, we got a lot of choices to make, but the main choice we need to make is for our souls. That's the first choice you need to make. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Over the weekend, um, I feel like God put a few songs in my heart. I'm going to play one of them to this morning. It's not telling the message, but I work my way up to that. This is like the remix. The name of the song is Crystal Clear. song is crystal clear i actually mixed a bunch of songs that i created for this mix you understand it's not telling the message but it's just something you know because people feel like christians are so uptight and this and that but we like to jam too but we need to start jamming out and rocking for christ that's why god put in my mind to make this type of music i spent a lot of time in my life making music for the world it's time to make some music for christ and you can get crunk doing it you can get hyped doing it you understand? I'm just being real, people. Now watch this. Check this out. Psalm 101. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. Now think about it. Sing of mercy and judgment. So you need to put one thing God told me. I was like, I can't think of words to say. Put my words in there. Mm. There's nothing new under the sun. I'm not trying to come out with the best lyrics in the world. I'm trying to spread the gospel. So I need to put the gospel 
in my songs mm, that God compels me to write. Now watch this. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, woman, thou coming to me, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A fraudward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privileged slander his neighbor, him will I cut off. Hand of heaven, how look, and a proud heart will I not suffer. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he, sh he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. Now think about that. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell in my house. What for yesterday, what I was talking about, Halloween, Christmas? He that work of deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tear in my sight. So think about Halloween and Christmas. Now think about that. First of all, Christmas is built on pulling lies. Halloween ain't got nothing to do with Christ. But people are bringing it to the house of the Lord. He said, he that work of deceit shall not dwell within my house. So how you know that's, if that's the house of the Lord, is deceit dwells there. Now, the New Testament in Revelation talks about the synagogue of Satan. People think the synagogue of Satan doesn't have a, a sign of this. This is the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> no, you would know them by their fruits. Mm. I would destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Let's go over to Ezekiel. This should be frightening to you. I don't know. This day and age, nothing seems to frighten anybody. The fear of the Lord don't seem to frighten anybody. It's need to. Let me see. It's, it's 18 or 19. Let's see. Eighteen. It's a long chapter. Bear with me. The word of me of the Lord came to me, saying, "What mean ye that you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge." As I live, saith the Lord God, you shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinneth shall die. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, and not eaten up his mountains, not have lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, not to have defiled his neighbor's wife, not to have come near to a menstruous woman, and have not oppressed any, but have restored to the debtor his pledge, have spoiled none by violence, have given his bread to the hungry, and have covered the naked with a garment. Now think about these. The Bible said, walk with a perfect heart. This is what makes you perfect. Mm doing what the Lord tells you to do. I'm not talking about work perfect in your own imagination or walk perfect in your own imagination. Walk perfectly according to how the Lord tells you to walk perfect. He that have not given forth upon usury, neither have taken any increase, that have withdrawn his hand from iniquity, have executed true judgment between man and man, have walked in my statutes and have kept my judgment to deal truly. He is just. He shall surely live, saith the Lord God. If he begot a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that doeth the like to any of one of those things, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even hath even up on the mountains, and defile his neighbor's wife, hath oppressed the poor, and needy, have spoiled by violence, have not restored the pledge, and have lifted up his eyes to the idols, have committed abomination, have given forth upon a usury, and have taken increase, shall he then live? He shall not live. He have done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Now, lo, if he begat a son, that see if all his father's sins, which he have done, and consider and doeth not such like, that have not eaten upon the mountains, neither have lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, have not defiled his neighbor's wife, neither have oppressed any, have not withholding the pledge, neither have spoiled by violence, but have given his bread to the hungry, and have covered the naked with a garment, that have taken off his hand from the poor, that have not received users nor increase, have executed my judgments, have walked in my statutes, he shall not die. For naked of his father, he shall surely live. 
So now the, the world always pushing generational curses. Let me tell you some people. Everybody got God's words in his heart. He said it. I will pour out my spirit in the last day. Well, we already know Jesus already poured out his spirit. People love to use it. Hey, y'all, uh, my parents were like this. Well, you can change. You can go a different route. Do you understand? As for his father, because the cruel, cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence, and did that which is not good among his people, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. Get say ye, why doth not the son bear the iniquity of the father? Mm, I'm getting there. Here it come. When the son have done that which is lawful and right, and have kept all my statutes, and have done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Oh, generational curses. Oh, really? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he have committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he have committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. And his righteousness that he have done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that the, he should return from his ways and live? But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and do it according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All this righteousness that he hath done shall be mentioned in his trespass that he hath trespassed, and his sin that he hath sinned, and them shall he die. And this goes back. He said, it's best to not have known my statutes than to know them and turn from him. Right? Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die? Hmm. Well, Jesus wiped away my sins. All right. Jesus also said, go your way and sin no more unless a worse thing come upon you. What's the worst thing that can come upon a man and a woman? Life after death in that place called hell. Again, when the wicked man turn away his wickedness that he hath committed and do of that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Get said the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. <laughs> oh, house of Israel, Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore, I would judge you, oh, house of Israel. Everyone according to his ways, said the Lord God. Repent. Oh, I don't like reading the New Testament. I mean, the Old Testament ain't got nothing to do with it. Whatever. It's the same words. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, said the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby you have transgressed and make you a new heart. <laughs> Perfect heart, huh? And a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord. God, wherefore turn yourselves and live. Hmm. So how do you walk with a perfect heart? How do you turn your heart hmm. to God? Hmm. Easy. Stay at it. <laughs> now think about this. He said, no man's. He said, work out your Salvation with fear of tripping, all right? But your works can't be, can't get you into heaven. But you got to do good things according to what the, what the Lord says. You got to keep his statutes. You got to work and you got to help the poor out. Now, everybody swear the Old Testament and the New Testament are different. Didn't Jesus say those same things in a different way? Didn't he say the same thing? Because Jesus is the word of God. And it's all the way in Ezekiel. I don't like reading the Old Testament. We ain't under the old. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. 
It may be a New Testament, but the New Testament spread the same exact words. You understand me? Now, let's go back to what I was talking about, generation curses. All right. Nobody is getting punished for the sins of their mothers or their kids or their fathers and their sons. You're punished for you. Oh, I want to do this because my mama do it. All right. You ain't got to keep doing it. You got free will. You got a choice to make just like everybody else got a choice to make. I don't believe in a generation of curses. God's telling us that we will bear our own inequities. You understand? You can't get to heaven and be like, well, the reason I did this or did that uh, because my parents did it. God be like, well, you could have stopped. Now, I know God has a judgment that's different from ours. I'm sure God knows the age of accountability better than anybody. I don't know the exact age of accountability. But the Bible clearly says the children will now suffer for the Inequity of the parents and the parents are not suffer for the inequity of the children. So that means even children bear their own cross Right they bear their own walk they bear their own journey Now I know God has an age range somewhere. I don't know That if a kid shall die younger a real child because of the inequity of the parents that it don't fall on them. I'm sure God has a perfect plan for that. Because people are like, what about those little children that die? Well, a little child that dies or somebody murders a little child, I'm sure God looks at it way different from how we look at it. I don't know for a fact, but I'm sure God got that little child in his hand. He said, suffer not the little children to come to me. And he said, woe to those that call my children to error or mislead them. Now, right? So you can mislead a child. Mm. But one thing I'm starting to trying to tell you is that child will be good. The inequity would be because you misled them. Because they didn't know no better. But there's an age when a child knows better. Mm. And I don't even know what age that is. That's why you need to tell your little children, hey, fear the Lord. Mm. You know, like I remember when I was young and probably elementary school, middle school. I remember when the world started punishing parents for the sins of the children. The children skip school, the parents get punished. <laughs> now think about that. If you tell a child, if you allow a child to not get punished and, and transfer the punishment to the children, what you gonna think will happen with the children? They gonna start being worse and worse. Because they ain't got to an answer for their problems. They ain't got to an answer for beating somebody up in school or bullying somebody. Their parents got to an answer. They ain't got to an answer for missing schools. They throw the parents in jail. So why would a kid want to turn from their evil ways when there are no consequences? But according to the Bible, there are. There are consequences to your actions as a child. Honor your mother and your father. For your days will be long upon this earth. He said, don't be overly wicked while I die before your time. There are a lot of children in this world that die in sin. Most people, look, it's just, he's just 13. And? What they got to do with anything? He could have been a perfect-hearted 13-year-old or a wicked-hearted 13-year-old. And guess what? A 13-year-old can go to hell too. Mm. I'm just letting you know, they can go to hell too. For all you children out there that swear, I ain't got to worry about it. I'm, the, I'm, I'm young. All right, keep letting the world fool you. <laughs> Thinking you ain't got to bear your own burdens. You got to bear your own burdens. Every soul has to bear their own burden. Every soul bear their own inequity. But there's a, a thing in the Bible that's called repentance. So you need to teach your kids repentance early. Mm. I'm going to wait to teach them repentance when they're about 18. Okay, that's kind of foolish. Teach them right now to fear the Lord. Don't wait. Mm. 
No, wait. You see people. And the thing is, children, listen to me, kids. If your parents are doing wickedness and you studying the Bible, you ain't got to continue in the wickedness because your parents do it. Like I said, people love to bring, bring, blame generational curses on everything. Now, let's go back to the commandments. He said, he was talking about idol worship. He was like, I will visit the iniquity upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, think about that. The thing is, you got to hate the Lord in order for the iniquity. How you show you hate the Lord? You go against his ways. You understand? If you read the book of Kings, it wasn't an automatic because the parent did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the kid was born and he did evil too. Now that works sometimes, but sometimes a child was born in that house and he did right in the sight of the Lord. He didn't follow the ways of his parents. Why is that? Because everybody's heart is different. It's a choice you got to make. You going to follow the ways of your family members? Or you going to follow the ways of the Lord? But the thing is, you need to teach the ways of the Lord. Well, read, read Kings. And he did right in the sight of the Lord. And he called Israel to sin. That's why I tell you people always be careful who you follow. You need to read the word. Follow the word. He said, place not your trust in man. Don't take my word for it. Read the word for yourself. Let me pause and I will continue.